Hi, my name is Bree, and I have the privilege of serving as Chief of Staff here at Transformation Church. At TC, our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And we just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you're watching from. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word just for you. So let's jump into today's message. I had a lot of things I wanted to say today, um, but I'm going to be here for a long time. So um, more than anything, I just want to give somebody hope. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, we're going to make it. No, 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 no. Look at somebody and tell them, like, look at them like, you already know. We're going to make it. Online, just tell them, tell them, tell them, we're going to make it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today, I feel like I need to end this series giving you a shot of crazy faith. And um, I, I just feel like part of my life message is to talk about our faith in Jesus and not just our saving faith, but the faith that allows us to, to actually take kingdom territory here on the earth and live a victorious life. And so today, I'm being very calm right now, but I'm about to act a fool. I really was supposed to start preaching next week, but this one is about to come from my gut. I may not need my notes. Because today I believe that many of us have been winding down on a year that God is just winding up. I feel like everybody's like, oh, it's downhill from here. And I came to wake you up. The series title is Launch in Victory, not Lay Down, not Lose, not, not Later. God said, I want you to, everybody shout at me, Launch. Say it like you mean it, launch. launch. I didn't say lunch because some of y'all want lunch right now. I said launch. But the problem is many of us have not figured out how to launch with the end in mind. And Pastor Charles has so eloquently talked to us over the past three weeks of, of, of intentionally finding a safe place to start, which was in prayer. And then he talked that we would need people to help us and finding our purpose along this, this, this road. And now I'm about to shoot you in the arm because it's time to launch. We're not going to stand here at the starting line talking about God about to do something. I am sick of church people blaming God for your inactivity. Okay, let me back up and let me. Do not say that it was God at the end of this year. Do not play his divine working in your life as somehow he has stopped. When y'all sing and wait on the Lord, that is an amazing song. If he told you to wait. But some of y'all singing that song and he told you to go. No, 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 no. I can't. I don't have everything. Wait on the Lord. He will. Re he said, there's no more strength that needs to be renewed. You now are making excuse because of fear. And you're covering it up saying, no, God, I'm waiting on you. He said, I told you this six months ago. I told you I would make a way out of no way. That if you would step, I would guide your steps. But you are still wait on the Lord. And if you pick the wrong anthem for a season that God has told you to do something else, it's witchcraft. Oh, let me stop. He told you to be single in this season and you praying for a relationship. That's witchcraft. What are you doing? You're being disobedient. And for many of you, I came to wake you up because I believe that God has called you. Everybody say to launch, launch. In, in victory. victory. Say it with me one more time. Launch in victory. With your chest, launch in victory. So what are you supposed to do? No, duh, launch a victory. I know, that's what we just said. <laughs> but specifically, what are you supposed to launch? 
For some of you, you're supposed to launch into a health journey. And for everybody, it's not no business. God called you to the spot you're in right now. Some of you, he called you to launch into counseling. Well, God, I just need some more. If you see how my financial situation is set up, but you did buy that new dress. And you do have a trip planned. Launch in victory. Some of you need to launch into forgiveness. Oh, you need to go ahead and plan to have the conversation. You, 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 need, to, you need to start moving. Everything is not about doing something that's postable on Instagram. When I say launch into something, God is trying to allow you to drop the weight so he can take you to a new atmosphere. Okay, some of y'all haven't studied space, but one thing I learned by talking to Bishop, uh, we were looking at spacecrafts, and what ends up happening is when, when spacecrafts go up, when they launch, there's certain weight that helps them get to a certain atmosphere. But once it gets to a certain atmosphere, if that weight doesn't drop off, it cannot go into the next place that God has called it to go. Some of y'all got me. You are believing God to do something in your life, but you will not launch. You will not drop the weight. You will not do what God's caused you to do. And today I want to give you practical steps of how to launch in victory. Y'all, we got 166 days left in this year. And prophetically, I believe that this is going to be the most altitude you have gotten in your calling in a long time. Yeah, three people thought that this was good. But I'm telling you right now, there's altitude coming to your anointing. There's some things that have been stagnant, some things that have not been moving forward that God says we are about to launch. I am full of expectation. There is no accident that next Sunday we're about to launch our ministry in another way. If you thought you've ever seen Transformation Church before, if you thought relationship goals and marked and crazy faith with our best messages, you ain't never heard me preach before. God God is about, oh, y'all don't hear me. God is about to take us to another stratosphere. We drop in weight and we're going high because God is about to do a, everybody say new thing. So today I want to go to Numbers chapter 13, verse 25 and teach you practically how to launch in victory. There was a season that God took the whole children of Israel through a wilderness. And in that wilderness, it was like, dang, is we ever going to get out of here? Has anybody ever been in a wilderness where it's like you, you think God forgot about you? Okay, can we be real, real? Is anybody in that season right now? Come on, just hands. Just be like, dang, when does this end? When is this over? Feels like a wilderness. The crazy thing about wilderness is, is that a lot of times there's a promise that's available for possession but we do not possess the ability to get it because we won't trust God. The promised land was available for the children of Israel all 40 years. They wandered in the wilderness. I need you to think about this, that what if the answer is already there? You don't need to move to another state. You don't need a new house or a new husband. Because some of y'all be plotting. He got one more time. Just stop it. What if the answer is right here, but because of fear and lack of faith to launch into what God's telling you to do, you wander in the wilderness 39 years too long. God had promised the children of Israel a promised land, and they were right up on it. But most people didn't have the ability to launch into what God promised in victory. And we're going to find out how that don't happen to us. Somebody say, not me. Not me. No, you didn't even say it like you believe it in the back. Somebody say, not me. Not me. After exploring the land for 40 days, because Moses sent 12 spies into the promised land to say, can, can we actually do this? After exploring the land for 40 days, the men returned to Moses Aaron and Aaron and the whole community of Israel at Kadesh, in the wilderness of Paran. They reported to the whole community what they had seen and showed them the fruit 
Like, dang, I ain't never seen no grape this big. Look at this orange. Oh my God, that's a strawberry. <laughs> this was the report to Moses. We entered into the land that you sent us to explore. And indeed, it's bountiful over there. More than enough. It's popping. There, everything we would want and need is over there. It is a land flowing with milk and honey. Here is the kind of juice and fruit and provision that is produced in this land. But there's a problem. There's people living there, and they're powerful, and their towns are large, and they're fortified. And we, we even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Yeah, you know, you know Sherland's boy, the big one, nine foot six, Anak, yes. The Amalekites lived there, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Electrolites, the Websites, the Gladys Knights, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the, they all there. But Caleb, Tried to quite, hey, shut up. Stop talking about why we can't do it. Stop focusing and maximizing on what is our deficiency. Stop, y'all. He stood before M Moses and said, let's launch. Let's go. Let's do it. Do we have the qualifications? No, but let's go and then watch this at once. Well, no, the beginning of the year is like a perfect time in my calendar to really start up because, you know, I'm a little OCD and I, everything happened today, uh, this week. Well, I was planning to get my bit right now. Well, if you give me just uh, 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 uh at this moment. Let's go, somebody shout at me at once. And watch this, take the land. Let's launch and see victory. Do you know how much gangster you have to have to call the victory before you show up to the game? I love the Bible. Because Caleb was like, we ain't even seen the whole team yet. But they ain't got nothing on us. Let's go at once and kick they. Amazing grace. And I'm just wondering, where did that tenacity go in the body of Christ? That if God gives you something that you don't have to have a 16-month plan to obey a today instruction? Oh, God. He told you to talk to that person at Starbucks today. Stop planning you coming back after your hair is done and making sure that your breath fit. He said, you don't know what that person's going to and the life and death that is on the brink for them. And God is saying, at once, let's go take this victory. Watch this. But the other men who explored the land with him disagreed. Uh uh. No, 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 buddy. We can't go up against them. They are stronger than we are. So they spread, whoa, my God. So they spread this bad report about the land among an entire country. The land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. All the people we saw were huge, huge. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak. Next to them, watch this, watch this, watch this. Next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And, and, that's what they thought, too. How you know? You're so scared to even talk to them, be around them. You had a conversation with this giant you was afraid of? 
I found that many of the giants in our life, we have made up projected stories about what they will do to us if we confront them. When God has already told us that we have the victory if we just step into the ring. And what we do is we spread lies and exaggerate the truth and make these notions that aren't even true. We assume that the banking system won't approve the loan. We assume that we can't go into a minority situation and become the majority. We assume because they never let no black people come and buy up the biggest arena in big speed that nobody could do it. But my God, uh oh, let me stop. But my God has something that he wants to do inside of your life that may be the prototype. It may be somebody shout at me the first. Okay. So if you're going to launch in victory, write this down. You have to see in victory. Stop talking about the launch and just close your eyes. See it. Brother Delano, see what God has called you to do. See, I, I don't got nothing to make it happen right now. But see it. 37 days after I became the lead pastor of this church, God showed me something. He allowed me to, everybody say, see. see. And this is a beautiful thing about seeing. Seeing's free. When we were young, my parents used to take us in, in wealthy neighborhoods because they didn't want to, I found this out later, they didn't want to pay for us to go to Celebration Station or any of those things. And so we would play this game called That's My House. Now, I don't know if any parents still do that to these days, but they roll all the windows down and you go through neighborhoods you don't live in and the kids say, that's my house. That's my house. One of the things that I loved about that is at a young age, I got to see things that I was not privy to in my own life. Seeing is free. And seeing can happen even in the situation that is unfavorable. I'm not talking about sight. I'm talking about, everybody say vision. vision. When I say see in victory, I want you to get a vision of yourself on the podium with the trophy. Whatever that trophy looks like for you. If the trophy is your family being healed and whole, I want you to see yourself. Standing around your family at Christmas time and it actually being real love in that room. I want you to see the victory. And the truth of the matter is, is that most of us are lacking vision. I told my team this morning, I said, I have so much clarity on the vision that God has given us for this church. Eyes have not seen, ears have, have not heard what God has prepared for us. Why? Not because it's happening right now. It's because I can see it. Everybody close your eyes. What do you see? What do you see in your health? What do you see in your family? What do you see in your marriage? What do you see in your self-esteem? Get a vision. See, when you start seeing what God sees about you, it changes everything. Joshua and Caleb saw something that nobody else saw. They saw the victory. He literally said, let's go at once and take the victory. He saw the win even when he could not qualify it and so many of us today want to qualify what God says with proof and many times I don't need proof as long as I have his presence let me prove it to you I keep this everywhere I go because 37 days after I became the lead pastor of the church I saw this scared to pastor no money in the church, people leaving every week, and the Holy Spirit at 7 a.m. said, write this down. The Spirit Bank Event Center will be Transformation Church. We will have a state-of-the-art facility. The Kids Zone will be a place that draws students from around the world. Somebody is going to underwrite the whole thing. 
We will always be in abundance. The internship will have facilities and be year-round. Businesses will be started out of our church that are successful. We will have amazing relationships with all existing businesses and all other major businesses to come. We will subdue, rule, and dominate in this area. Many business people and their friends and family will come to Christ because we represented God to them for transformation in Christ. Equipping the body of Christ will happen in this facility continually. It will be filled three times over every weekend. Major secular events will be held there that will pay abundantly for the expansion of God's kingdom, March 9, 2015, 729 a.m. in Bella's room. So, so the crazy thing about it is, the crazy thing about it is, that was five years before we stepped foot in this building. And eight years before we actually stepped foot back in this building. But I saw in victory. I'm challenging everybody right now for the next 166 days to see what you've been scared to see. This was scary to write down because there's nothing in me that could make this happen. For some of y'all, there are things, moving out of your house would be the scariest thing to write down. Because you in a double mortgage, you got, you, you, your dog is pawned right now. You pawned your dog to be able to figure out, go get Rufus. You've done everything that you could do. To, no, I'm talking about real stuff that I know is going to, you don't even believe God for your health anymore because there's just so many things. I dare you to see yourself whole. I dare you to see yourself happy again. Some of y'all have been in such a deep, dark hole of depression that you don't even see yourself no more with joy. You see pictures of yourself years ago and you think, who is that person? But I dare you to see yourself again. See in victory. And that means you have to have a vision. Look what it says, Numbers 13, 25. They reported to the whole community what they had seen. The crazy thing about it is you can be in the same place looking at the same thing and see two different things. Please don't see for me. I have family members, people I love, people around me. I'm not borrowing what you see. You see what you see? I see what I see. We can be sitting in the same raggedy situation. And God said, I'm about to flip this whole thing for your good. And somebody said, you about to flip out in this situation. See that if you want to. But my vision is going to align with being a kid of the king. And I am going to see in victory. Somebody shout at me, see in victory. Yeah. Now, now, this is going to take some of you a second to go through all of these things for you, you, you to wake up again because you've been so downtrodden in the cares of life. That to see in victory, that just seems like a waste of time. And my prayer is that you wouldn't die in the wilderness. I'm going to go to the end of the story. Only two people got to actually experience the promised land that were alive at this time. Two out of two million. And the only qualification is they saw in victory and thought God could do it. Joshua and Caleb, he literally waited to everybody else die and bless the children to go into the promised land because only two people could see in victory. Church, that is not what God wanted to happen. The goal was for everybody to walk into the, everybody say everybody. everybody. That's you. God wants all of us, not just Pastor Mike, the pastor. The pastor, you nobody care about the pastor. God wants his people, no matter where you are, to be able to live in victory, but you can't live in what you can't see. So the first step for us launching in victory, victory is to everybody say, see in victory. Get a vision. But watch this second thing right here. It, after you... See in victory, we're going to be able to tell if you, it's real or not. 
Because the next thing you have to do to launch in victory is speak in victory. And some of y'all got visions that you curse with your mouth. Everything you say cancels out everything you saw. You be talking about what God is going to do, but I'm broke. I see myself healthy, but shoot, when I'm hungry and when it's late, you know what I'm saying? I'm just going to eat whatever I want. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If you vi- if you see it in vision, you got a vision for victory, you got to speak in victory. And some of us have played our set. The devil didn't even have to play you. You played you. Your family patterns played you. Your generation doubt and and negative self-talk has played you because God will give you a vision and you'll start speaking against what God said. I just don't, I don't, I do not see how God's going to take somebody like me and do something like that. Nobody in my family ever done nothing like that. We shy. You know God called you to a large platform, but you're going to continue to speak. I mean, I mean, I mean, I I sing, but not in front of people. What are we going to do when God speaks? You're going to be a multi-millionaire business owner. Except if you speak. I just, I just, every month I'm just broke. Every month I'm broke. Don't matter what happened. Get more money, still broke. It can be truth and not said. No. It can be the truth. I may be in a situation or a season or a time, but when I speak, life and death is in the power of the, oh my gosh. I'm either allowing it to live or killing it with this. I'm going to save myself for marriage, but I'm lonely. And cuffing season is on the way. And I, 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 I'm going to be good unless. Do you know how many landmines the Holy Spirit is walking through in your life? (sighs) He's trying to get to you, but all the words, all the curses you've spoken over yourself, the enemy don't got to curse you, you don't curse yourself. I'll never be able to lose this weight. Holy Spirit is like, ah, your body's the temple of me. I'm trying to help you. Get your words lined up with the word of God. Get your words lined up in victory. It's not enough to just see in victory. You have to, everybody say, speak in victory. Okay, 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 okay. Because when you speak in victory, it validates everything you saw when nobody was there. When I got this vision from God, I began to tell people. And the crazy thing is, you know somebody crazy when they talk. We don't know if you're crazy. Till you start talking. <laughs> you ever met somebody that looked normal? Yeah. Okay. And if you haven't, it's you. <laughs> it's you. You're the crazy one. But look what happened. Numbers 13, 25. It says, but Caleb tried to quiet the people. He tried to hush what they were saying that was negative. And he tried to say, hey, we can go. Look, at, look what he spoke. We can certainly conquer it. We can certainly take the land. We can certainly see the victory. Um, I found out there's two places that people go when they speak. They either go to negative exaggeration or a new expectation. You're going to put it on the screen because they don't even understand. You're either going to go, you're going to live in one of these places. The people that could not see God, they went over here. They so big. We ain't got, we, look at us. We ain't got nothing. We're like little bitties. There's nothing we, they exaggerated the situation 
because they didn't think they had what it took to try. It's an excuse. And there are many believers that you have been called by God, chosen to be the generational change in your family. And all you're doing is sitting at the starting or the launching pad, exaggerating stuff you don't even know if you'll face if you go after it. Do you know how many things we could make a big deal and magnify? But God's saying, don't have negative um, exaggerations. Walk into a new expectation. There's giants in the land. I like killing giants. Have you ever killed one before? Nope, but it feels like a good day to take one out. Like, do you understand what I'm saying? Like, have you ever bought an arena like this before? Uh-uh. But this gonna be the first one. Like, do you, do you get a new expectation? Did you try and fail? Yep, but this one feel different. How many relationships have you been in that failed? A lot. A number? Too many to count. But the next one is going to be the best one. Like, get a new ex- Oh, my gosh. I'm telling Transformation Church, this is where I'm living. I don't care what comes and how hard it is. Every opposition is a chance for God's glory to be seen in my life. Yes, there were giants in the land, so God could get the glory. He's not a king or somebody who takes over territory if you don't take it from somebody. The king is only known by possessing territories from other people who once had it. God is trying to go into people and give them the authority to walk in faith into territory that the enemy has once claimed. And he's saying, now there's a new sheriff in town. I want the people of God. I want the people of God to be able to possess. But that means... I got to see in victory. I got to, everybody say, speak in victory. victory. This is the thing I got to do. I got to stay out of that negative exaggeration. And watch this. I got to search in vulnerability. Got to search my heart. Because some of the things that we are desiring, God doesn't desire for us. The worst thing to launch into is the wrong thing. Everybody's like, we're launching into victory. That wasn't where I wanted you to end up, though. Like, like, don't launch into a career or into a mindset or into an idea because you saw that somebody else did it and it looked like that could be a good thing. This is why we're about to go into seven days of prayer and fasting. For the next 166 days, we're saying, God, search my heart. If there's anything in you that is, if there's anything in me that's not like you, remove it, take it out, change it, make me more like you. God, I am available for whatever you want to do. I got to search my heart and vulnerability. And some of us have built up a wall in our heart that will allow us to stay grounded when God wants us to launch. Because God said, you got to drop some of the stuff that you put on your, on your vision board. I'm coming for your vision board. I'm coming for your 2022 goals. Seven of them are God. 39 of them are you. And God only pays bills that he actually made. Everything you made made up outside of God, let me say it again. Everything you made up outside of God, you have to pay for He paid it all. Not that. (laughs) The thing that I've been doing on this sabbatical is searching my heart and vulnerability. Why do I want that? Why does that fulfill me? Why am I drawn to people like that? Uh Uh-oh. Why is this trash TV so exhilarating? Why did I watch nine episodes? in six days. 
of this thing that just... I'm, y'all see how quiet it is right now? Everybody's like... <laughs> delete history, delete history. <laughs> well, why is my safe place something that hurts me in the long run? Why? I don't even want to be with him. Why am I in this bed? Uh-oh. I'm talking about real stuff. Like, like I'm, I'm not talking, like, how, how do I keep ending up at this casino? And I'm already in debt. Okay. Like, I want to talk about, re- like, I want to talk about real stuff. How come... The college parties are the place that I feel alive. But in the presence of God, I feel ashamed. Where? If we don't get, we'll never launch in victory if we don't get to vulnerability. One of the things I love about my community is I can't hide there. And this is why I'm asking everybody to get in small groups. Why I'm asking everybody to get in B groups. Why I'm asking everybody to serve somewhere. Because you got to get somewhere you can't hide. The enemy is killing the church in the dark. And you're using excuses like, I just don't fool with people like that. And I, I've been hurt before. All of us have. Who are you? Jesus was hurt. He let Judas hold the, the, the bunny. And he sold him out for what? The money. One person in this room that hasn't been hurt. Well, I just can't do church because church hurt me. You've been hurt at your job. You've been hurt at the mall. You've been hurt at your, in your own family. Your husband hurt you. Your kids hurt you. This is life. But why the only thing that could actually help you, you have now used the excuse... Uh Uh-oh, you're not ready to get vulnerable. Church, I'm just telling you, Transformation Church is a vulnerable church. You will have ammunition on me to go out and say, well, you know the pastor told you. Yeah, I told you. The only reason you know, because I said it. You don't know me. (laughs) But I'm deciding that I don't want to hide behind a veneer and lead you. I only can do this, in, I only can last in this in vulnerability. And God's asking all of us, you want to launch in victory? You need to search that heart in vulnerability. And, and, I, and I see this, I want to stay there longer, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep going. If you're going to launch in victory, you have to watch this, watch this, watch this. Stand in vigilance. Now, vigilance is not a word that a lot of people use today. But, but you got to be able to stand even when it's hard. I think that our generation has become very weak because adversity for most people equals bad. But adversity actually equals strength. Adversity consistency over time staying in the same spot that's hard will produce a strength on the inside of you that allows you to stand in anything else when marriages go through crap and they make it on the other side of it you ask any of them my marriage is a hundred times better now than it was before why because they were vigilant they stood in the midst of adversity And right now, our generation, because of fear of being canceled, (laughs) any adversity? Oh. Did you say something that everybody don't like? Did you believe God and other people didn't believe with you? (laughs) We're ready to run at everybody else's report. And we have lost the ability to stand in the midst of it. What would you have done if you were to come up to the Red Sea and it was a sea? 
Like, I want everybody to think about that. We all like, because you know God's going to part it. Before that moment, there has never been a parting. All right, y'all. Um, okay, everybody hands up, okay, hands out, okay, so let's stretch, um, not exactly sure, hold on, do what, take my staff and do what, talk amongst yourselves, talk amongst yourselves, um, This would be a good time for us to turn back and fight, maybe. God, that sounds great, but maybe I have a more practical plan. I mean, you are Jehovah, and like you, we did just see you do like ten different plagues. Like, I mean, the frog thing that was crazy. Like, rivet, rivet. Like that was nuts. Like, <laughs> but. They came up to an adversity that wasn't even an enemy. All your adversity is not an enemy. Some of it is the stuff you just got to stand through. It's the stuff you got to just stand there until it changes. It's the stuff that you got to be consistent. If nobody shows up, I'm still going to do it. If nobody buys my music, I'm still going to make it. If nobody shows up to the Bible study, I'm still going. Oh, y'all about to get me fired up right now. I am going to be vigilant in the middle of adversity. And until that's built in you, you'll never launch in victory. Do you know that every rocket faces gravity? Every rocket is launched into adversity. The entire gravitational pull is working to keep it grounded. That means if you're ever going to get into a new atmosphere, expect adversity. I'm feeling my help come on right now. I'm about to get gangster. Maybe it's the braids. But I'm telling you, there's no way, Bree, that we could come take this much territory in the city and not have the gravitational pull of generational, oh my God, poverty and racism and segregation. It's a gravitational pull that didn't want a place that looks like heaven to be put right in this place. In the place where Black Wall Street happened 35 miles away, they don't want the people to come together and be able to go from the country club to the, to, oh my God. They don't want to go from the freeze to the country club and be able to see people come together and worship God. There's a gravitational pull that will work against us launching in victory. But this is what our assignment is. So if you're, watch this, if you're not experiencing some adversity, you may not be launching in the right place. So some of the most easiest things were the worst things I ever did. Dang, why was it so easy to get with her? Why, why was it so easy to lie like that? Because the enemy wants you to do that. Adversity, watch this, is a sign you're anointed for it. Everything that has tried to stop us from being open back in this building means we were anointed to be here. Like, like everything that's been stopping you from doing what I'm trying to teach you how to launch in victory right now. The reason why it's been so hard to find a counselor is because the enemy knows that if you and your wife actually get in counseling six months from now, those childhood traumas that have been plaguing you and keeping you grounded where you don't even know how to talk to your wife, the people you love, and you about to explode all the time. The enemy knows that if you ever would get in that place, you would launch into a new stratosphere. Who is that? That's James? James ain't never been that happy. James ain't never asked me, did I want any? You are grounded because you think adversity means to stop. 
But time, the time is now to launch into victory. <laughs> if you don't get consistency in this next season, you're going to be um, I'm really disappointed in the conversion of what God does in your life. Now, I need everybody to hear me say this. That's just a baby, y'all. It's the baby crying. We love babies here, okay? Yeah. This is a family church, everybody. My son gonna start screaming here in a minute. Mother, yeah. yeah. Adults are so wild. Y'all wild. Like, oh my God. The baby is screaming. What y'all know? Your, your, your kid's bad too. This, this is what I'm telling you. Y'all, we're gonna be just a family church. This is all good. What I'm saying to you is the consistency is going to determine what you see in this next season. Don't try it for 12 days and blame God. Well, you know, you know I, I tried that tithing thing. I tried it and that next, that next, that next, uh, the fifth, the sixth, I tried, I tried it and it didn't work. Well, okay, how long did you try it? Three days? I gave it on Sunday. I said, God, if you don't come through by Thursday, you know what I'm saying? It's over for me. The song said, you a man of your word. He didn't say that. You said that. And so many times we put these stipulations on God that if he put any stipulations on you, uh oh, let me let me stop. Let me stop because you yeah, how many people in here is like, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I'll live. <laughs> Going back on that word 1900 times. Consistency. Somebody say consistency. Stand in vigilance. Yeah. I'm gonna keep moving. I can't. Obey God said. Uh, obey what God said, even when you're standing in the opposite. Let me just tell you that. You can stand in something that looks completely opposite and still obey God. They don't respect me here. Obey God. They don't acknowledge my creative. But if he told you, th these men were standing in the opposite but they obeyed God to say what they saw and they spoke that thing and they were standing in everybody else. I mean, imagine two, 1 million, 1.9, everybody except two people out of 2 million. That's a lot of numbers. I was trying to find it and my computer fried. It was like zero, 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 zero. My ninth grade math teacher would be appalled. But that, woo, everybody step two, okay. <laughs> but think about it. Standing in the face of all of that opposition, they still had to obey God. What if Caleb and Joshua's win was just saying it to the people? What if it wasn't even going into the promised land? What if it was just proclaiming it? Some of y'all are scared to do the thing before the thing. He ain't even ask you to get on the platform. He just asked you to prepare a message. And like literally they had to obey even though it's like, this is opposite of like, I don't got, why, why am I coming up with a logo? And I don't got no product. Stop trying to understand. Stop needing all of the solution. Any parent knows that there's some things you ask your kids to do that you don't got to understand all the reasons why. I'm working something behind the scenes for your good. Just go clean your room. Just, just pick up. Wash the dish. Write the vision. Open the bank account. Downsize your house. 
Oh God, this was a miracle. <laughs> this house is a miracle. I gave him crazy faith. And you've enjoyed it for one year. Now go down. Because you're going to need that extra capital to do what I called you to do in the next season that you can't see yet. Oh, babe, move to Tulsa. What's in Tulsa? <laughs> Lord, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out. I mean, I love TC, but man, there's six other days of the week. They river, don't even stay full, Lord. I don't know. Can't nobody float on it with floaties. Like, why are we here, Lord? If you have to understand to obey, you will live in disobedience. And a lot of people are praying for things God will never do because you were disobedient to the last instruction. Do you know how many wasted prayers there are? Not because God doesn't want to answer them, it's because you were disobedient to the last instruction. God doesn't skip over things he says and tells you to do. That's like my kids going to ask their mama, can I have a, 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 a juice box? And she says, what did your daddy say? And daddy said, no, but that's why I came to ask you. Because we're looking out for the, 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 the uh, actual validity and the betterment of our child, we stay unified. God's not skipping his own word. The Bible says he's a man of his word. He does not lie. If he told you to do something, he's not skipping over it in a new season. You might have forgot he didn't. And that's why you can obey even when it looks opposite. See in vision. Speak, I mean, see the vision. Speak in victory. Search in vulnerability. Stand in vigilance. And watch this. Submit to vast. Any vision that God wants to do in your life is way bigger than you ever thought you could do. I am standing in something is, that is way bigger than what I thought God was going to do with my life. I, wake, I go to sleep every Saturday morning and wake up knowing that there will be thousands of people that listen to what I say, analyze what I say, move in faith off of what I say, or create a video and talk about my braids from what I say. Like, I know that... <laughs> To somebody, this is a satanic mark. See, there's four of them. Uh, and they're, these four mean something, and the little one means road to hell. And like, what? Well, you need friends, bro. And a hug. And do you see the fade on his vest? It's like going from one level of the demonic spirits to the next level of the de like. Y'all, you need a hobby. But that burden is on me every week. This is more than I ever thought. But I trust. Write the word down, trust. Uh, I trust that God chose me for this. I trust that he saw all of my shortcomings and still said, you. I, I trust that this is the place that I'm at today and he will carry me to the place I'm supposed to go tomorrow. Somebody shout at me, trust. trust. If you don't submit to vast, you don't trust God's plan for your life. And vast doesn't mean big. It just means impactful. The vast vision that God has for you could be impacting one classroom. That could be way bigger than anything. You weren't even good at school and you hated. You got anxiety going in there because you always felt like tests were measuring you and you were measured at home and all that. And God says, go back into that place that was the place that you felt low and pull somebody else out. And you can be walking in purpose, a vast purpose, if you just trust God. Joshua and Caleb saw something nobody alive at the time in their country saw. We're well able. How I've never done this before, but I'm well able. That's not trust in your ability. That's trust in your God. Somebody say, I'm well able. I want you to say that all week when you start thinking about the thing that is hard for you to do. 
these jumping jacks, I'm well able. No, 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 no. Come, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you. Talk to these kids with respect. Some of y'all, I'm in your house right now because you've been talking crazy and sideways and you reap what you sow. The reason they acting crazy with you right now is because you've been sowing that for 13 years. Uh-oh. Now you're reaping a double harvest. So now you have to sow something different and God's saying, speak to them like I speak to you. I'm well able. When you start to submit, or can I say it a different way? Humble yourself. God's ways are bigger than your way. Humble yourself to a vast vision and trust God. Somebody say, I trust you, God. That's going to be the new mantra for everybody that's about to walk into this next 166 days of bigger than me. I trust you, God. Well, they just called back and said it's not going to happen. I trust you, God. When God told me that this was our building, they told us they wasn't accepting no offers on the building. I trust you, God. It wasn't until another business from Texas had put an offer and they were in the closing room. It was closing day. I woke up and somebody else was buying the building and it fell through and nine minutes later they called us and said, do you want the building? I said, I trust you God. What I'm telling you. And I was so convinced that this was ours that they could have bought it. They could have bought it, done the remodel, and then gave it to us. See? <laughs> I trust you, God. However you want to do this. However you're going to pay for this college. I trust you, God. However you're going to heal this sickness. I trust you, God. However you're going to bring my family back together. I trust you, God. However you're going to get me out of this poverty mindset. I trust you, God. However you're going to get this weight off of me. I trust you, God. However you're going to change my insecurities into my power. I trust you. If you go launch in victory, there's got to be trust. But that means you got to submit to something that's way bigger than you right now. Last thing, if you're going to launch in victory, you need to be secure in your value. You got to have identity. Um, the reason I put this point in here because next week we're launching as a church. I don't know what's about to happen. Y'all, I have this expectation. Can you go put them two things back on the screen real quick? Like, like, I've been in this place where the enemy tried to hit me with negative exaggeration earlier this summer when I was on sabbatical. He's like, ain't nobody coming back. What you thought? You had your moment. And then you obey God, you're going to shut the building down. No, I'm telling you how the enemy was talking to me. You shut the building down when you had momentum. Do you know how hard it is to get momentum? You ain't got no volunteers. Ain't nobody about to volunteer now. It, it, uh, uh, it's COVID season. Ain't nobody coming to give. Ain't nobody. I mean, the enemy was trying to exaggerate the lie. About four and a half weeks ago, I told the enemy to go to hell. No, I'm sorry. This is just how I say you go to hell. And I step, y'all, I have a new expectation. That vision on that paper said this place is going to be filled three times over every Sunday. It said that there would be people that would come from all over the world. That this would be a headquarters for people to be deployed into every sphere of influence. That the kingdom of God would be advanced from this place. I got a new expectation. I'm so hyped about what God's about to do in this church and through our lives. I told the staff, y'all better get ready. Because what God's about to do here, I see young people and old people and people who have had disabilities and people who have lived in different lifestyles. I see us all coming here and God beginning to mold and make us and transform. You can't be a part of a church called Transformation Church and stay the same. You about to get a new you, boo-boo. God is about to do something completely different. 
But I got a new expectation. Somebody say a new expectation. But the only way that I could get a new expectation and the only way that I can get ready, because this is the thing, with a new expectation, hear me, that means for a lot of us, we're actually going to launch. And with a new expectation, it's going to work because we're launching in victory. It's going to work. That means you have a new level of responsibility. And at this new level of responsibility, it looks like success and a burden to actually steward over what God gave you. And this is the part where pride creeps in. Okay? I'm just trying to give you the formula. We up in the air. God's doing it. And he said, remember, I love you without that. So you got to be secure in your value. How many people show up next week has nothing to do with who God's called me to be and what this church is called to do. Like, 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 I need everybody to say, your worth is not attached to your work. If you're going to launch in victory and stay up, it cannot be. When everybody loves it, I'm valuable. When everybody hates it, God, I don't have... No, 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 no. Secure in your value. I believe that God is about to transform radically. It's on this house. A lot of uh, what's happened in this house has been a radical transformation. Like we went from a converted grocery store to like an arena. We went from nobody knowing who we were to like millions of people knowing. We're impacting. Did you, we gave $150,000 to a church today during off. Is y'all's church right? We didn't have $150,000 when I started. What I'm telling you, it's about to happen. Somebody say, it's about to happen. <laughs> but right now, before it happens, unt untether your value from what happens. I'm trying to give y'all, I'm trying to give them the keys, playboy. I'm trying to let them know how it's actually going to happen. Unconnect. You're loved if nobody likes it. You're valuable if it doesn't monetarily make sense. If your family doesn't understand, you are still chosen by God. If you, if you don't have the identity piece together, the enemy will always paste an identity on you. That now you will be living in identity fraud. And you think you got to be something that God never requires from you. The thing I love about Joshua and Caleb is even at, like, can I just let y'all know how this launch and victory thing happened for them? They went in, they spoke in victory. They saw in victory. They was vigilant and it didn't work. See, everybody's like, but they made it to the promised land. Decades later. They did everything they supposed to do. And what happened? Every day they had to wake up and be like, I know I'm not crazy. I know God spoke to me. I know he told me that's a, right there, it's right there. What y'all doing today? We're playing hopscotch, okay. But this ain't where we supposed to be. Am I, have I? What's wrong with me? Why well, I'm not enjoying the wilderness? Why don't I get as much joy out of this desert place as everybody else? God, it's something. No, I do have value. I'm going to make it. I did see you. I did hear you. I I'm talking to some of y'all because some of y'all been asking yourself these same questions. Like, God, why did... And God's saying, no, 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 no. You're going to see the victory. But I want you to be secure in your value. And this is so beautiful, like the beginning of one of our favorite scriptures. Y'all got to see who God's talking to. Joshua chapter 10, verse 9. Look what he tells him. He says, be strong and courageous. What I'm about to do in your life, know your identity. 
No, I called you. Be strong and courageous. You got to do something that nobody else has done. You got to be the two out of two million. And you got to wear that thing. Let me tell you a true story. First time with braids. 35 years old. I'm not having a midlife crisis. I don't think. <laughs> but my son wears his hair like this, okay? So we were going on a, a, a trip to Disney World with the kids, and my son got his hair braided. And I was like, yeah, like, I want to just, I don't know. Like, there are a lot of miracles happening. I'll tell you all about with MJ this whole summer. Like, God's just been like, boop, 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 boop. Like, doing all kinds of different stuff. It's just been, whoa! It's been crazy. And I don't know, I just feel like, like, on the trip, we matched every day. Like, I went and bought jerseys, and, like, we had the same jerseys on every day. And I was like, well, let's just take it all the way. He got his hair braided. Daddy get his hair braided. And we look like little twins. <laughs> and then I was thinking about like coming back to church with the braids. Because I had to commit, like if I cut the sides of this, you know, I like my hair a certain way. So if I had to cut the sides all the way up, if I put my regular high top back up, then it would look kind of like a mohawk. And I was like, eh, that's not going to work. And so then I was like, but what are people going to think? Like what's going to happen? We have some white people that usually people that have braids, like, it means no go, pow, pow, gangster. <laughs> oh, y'all, y'all, y'all gonna act like it's like, whoa, get out of there, duck. Like, it's like, oh, I'm a leader of a multi-ethnic, multi-generational, I gotta think about all these things. I, and then the holy, <laughs> it's the truth. Somebody been in the comments ready to go the whole time, like, the braids. The braids, Jan, the braids. Like, they've been... Calm down. I intentionally came in a more preppy outfit. My, my, like, my like, gangster professor today, you know what I'm saying? How are you? <laughs> Okay, look, all of that was a part of my consideration, but the truth of the matter is, my value has not changed. Like, 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 like I, want you to, I want you to see how much effort and energy many times we give to things that actually have nothing to do with our actual identity. And I made the decision. I said, wife, do you like the braids? She said, you kind of look dangerous. I said, what you mean? <laughs> huh? 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 What you mean? I'll go get a... <laughs> Tell me I look dangerous. I almost took up jujitsu or something. I almost... It was that fast, huh? Y'all almost lost your pastor. I almost became a CIA agent, huh? When I went to the right place for my value, look, this is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> when I went to the, the people that it mattered, the one who it matters, it made me secure in my identity. This next season, you're going up. But the pressure up there is different than the pressure down here. And if your identity is not intact on the ground, it can't be secure in the air. Secure your value, know your identity. How are we going to launch in victory? We're going to see the vision. Speak in victory. Search in vulnerability. Stand in vigilance. Submit to vast, secure our value, and then we got to sustain velocity. Ain't nothing worse than getting up and coming right back down. God said this next move is not a temporary thing. I'm trying to take you to a whole new place. I'm trying to let you live up here. Somebody say we live up here. 
Yeah, no, 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 no. Somebody say, we live up here. We love people no matter what. We live up here. Ah. We don't allow culture to dictate our mood. We are children of the king of God. We, we live up here. When we see somebody in need, we have more than enough to help them. Somebody say, we live up here. What we're trying to do is sustain at this velocity. We're not launching to then come back down to launch again. I said, we, we're trying to sustain. But how do you sustain anything? Power. If you're going to launch in victory, you need the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm not going to church you too bad at the end of this message. But I'm just telling you, you will not be able to go to the stratosphere that God has called you to if you go on willpower. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you know how clear this is in the Bible? That Jesus, when he leaves, he said, all right, y'all, last instruction. Y'all about to launch into the world and turn this whole thing upside down. Y'all, right here, this ragtag group of people who left their jobs, underqualified. Peter, you've been cutting people's ears off. I had to call you Satan a couple times. <laughs> These, uh, J Judas, down Tom, everybody, uh, hey. Y'all about to launch into the world. People will talk about you millennial after you are dead. They going to name their kids after you. Paul, do you know how many Pauls they going to be, Paul? Like, I want you to think about this. Peter, do you know how many Peters are in the world? Because of one Peter? But I need y'all to do one thing real quick. Go up to that room and wait until you get power. Because if you try to do this big thing without the power source, this ain't going to last long. Acts chapter 1 verse 7, because some of y'all looking at me like, I don't remember that in Bible study. Here it is. He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know. But you... Will. Everybody say, I will. I will. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then, once you get that power source, guess what you get to be? Witnesses. When a rocket goes up, it doesn't even matter if you're around the launch site. Everybody around. You can be in another city. What is that? Who is that? You're going to be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Y'all, if we're going to do what God's called us to do, we have to sustain in velocity. I feel like a power ranger or some kind of uh, a superhero, we got to power up. Why are we going into seven days of prayer and fasting? We're about to power up. I remember this little cartoon character be like, mm -hmm. and then he would, mm -hmm. oh, you get, like this is what he was doing when he was doing this is he was going inward to power up. So then he when he released everything that tried to oppose him would feel what was coming out and through him, and this is what God's telling me. This next 166 days will not be able to be what I called it to be unless you power up. Let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you. We are going to be fasting as a church. Pastor Mike, this is how you call coming back? Yes. I'm coming back to teach you how to launch in victory. I want everybody under the sound of my voice for the next seven days to push your plate away. Go on a Daniel's fast. I'm not telling you how to do it. Give up sweets. Give up television. Give up social media. Give up something. Exchange something and get into prayer. And I need you to power up. Because what God is about to do in this church and in your life is it's about to allow you to launch. But we need a sustained thing. I don't want you beat up in January talking about here we go and again. New year, new me. Lord, do a new thing. What if he doesn't have to do a new thing in January? 
What if he's just continuing what he already started? Oh, okay. This is where we are, church. We're about to launch a victory. I have so much vision. Start playing softly behind me because I got so much more. But we're here next week for homecoming. And I'm telling you, get here early. I'm saying come, come real early. There'll be people driving from all over the country. There'll be people. And then right after that, we go into conference for, five, for three days. And y'all, we got live recordings. And people are coming to be refreshed. And there's going to be fullness and overflow. And then that next Sunday, we're doing Flood Sunday. And hundreds of people are going to get baptized. And we're going to see, like God's about to, this is the perfect time to decide to launch. The momentum of this moment there will never be a better time to say, God, I trust you. But the thing that I found out is the only way to really launch is to fully invest into whatever God's saying. And what does that mean? Not just see in victory, not just speak in victory. Last thing for real, so in victory. And I'm not talking about money. You got to sow your life. Sow your time. So your treasure, some of y'all are the stingiest people in history with what God gave you. You can sing and don't nobody know it. Now, some of y'all can't sing and you think you can sing and you are in delusion, but we'll help you find out. Some of you are administrators and haven't helped anybody. Some of you have the gift of help. You, when's the last time you sold your life? And I'm asking you, if you call Transformation Church your home as we're launching, I'm asking everybody who's been sitting on their hands, guarding themselves in vulnerability, hiding behind excuses of the past and hurt and all this other stuff, I'm saying, let's launch. Serve. Go on the website, sign up for a team. We need children's church workers. Everybody don't love kids, but some of y'all love them. And they're going through hell in their homes every week. And what if they came here and met Miss or Mr.? We need men in these rooms. You can get the word on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But what if you were the only godly male figure in some young person's life? And out of everybody they have had in their life, you could be the one to transform them forever. It's time to everybody sow in victory. There's no offering. There's no building campaign. Everybody, I'm trying to represent what? When somebody says sow, I don't know, we don't want your money. But God does want your life. What if you never had to give a dollar ever again? But what if that meant you had to actually sow everything he did give you? Some of y'all be like, here, take my money, here. Because <laughs> some of y'all could go into that, that workplace that has a toxic environment and so encouragement. And you don't even think it's worth it because it ain't going to change nothing. Look at them. Look, And God said, I didn't call you to change everything. There's three people there that are hanging on by a thread. And if you just went in and did what I told you to do, even in the opposite, it would change this whole thing. Time to sow in victory. Hands lifted everywhere. Just, just, God, today, as I've talked to your people about what you've shown me, the, the, the prophetic sign you showed me of the next 166 days being a launching pad for your church, for this church, for our ministry, but for your people. God, today I'm asking you that everybody under the sound of my voice would truly get with you not just see a vision, but get a vision from you. Let them speak in victory, Lord. And Father, let them search their hearts in vulnerability. God, I'm asking you that you would allow them to stand in vigilance. And Holy Spirit, even as we're in this moment, I thank you that people are about to submit to a plan that's way bigger, way uh, more vast than we ever thought. Thank you for us being secure in our value and sustaining the velocity through the power of the Holy Spirit. God, my real prayer today is that we would sow our lives into something that's bigger than us. 
and that we would find fulfillment in obeying what you've called us to do. God, let us take up our space in the earth. I thank you that there would be a boldness, like there was a boldness on Joshua and Caleb. Be strong and courageous. Father, let them do the things nobody in their family ever have done. The things that they said they would never do. The things that they've been afraid to do. Thank you that faith would arise in this church. We would launch in victory. Everything changes today. Thank you. You're the one that brought us to this place. Father God, we will give you the glory. We'll give you the honor and we will give you the praise. Isaiah 43, 15, it says it like this. I am the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, creator and king. I am the Lord who opened a way through the waters, making dry paths through the sea. I called forth the mighty army of Egypt with all its chariots and horses. I drew them beneath the waves and they drowned their lives, snuffed out like a smoldering candle wick. But forget all of that. Yeah, that's what I did in the past, but forget it. Receive this word right now. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. I feel the presence of God. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers out of dry wastelands. Somebody better receive this word. The wild animals in the field will thank me. The jackals and the owls too for giving them water in the desert. Yes, I will make rivers out of dry wastelands so that my chosen people can be refreshed. God is about to fill us up to overflowing. This is a season of refreshing. We are going to launch, live, love in victory. If you're in this room right now, yeah, I feel the presence of God right there. Something's coming alive in somebody right now. If you're in this room right now, and there has been apprehension, if you're watching online right now, and there has been fear to launch and do what God has called you to do, I just want you to stand. I'm gonna pray for you right now. This is a, this is a prophetic moment, right? There's something that you know you're supposed to do, and there has been apprehension, there's been fear, there's been hesitation to actually launch and do it. I just want you to stand. This is an act of faith right now. At your home, raise your hand in the chat. I want you to just stand. I'm about to pray for you, because something is about to change in this room. Oh, I feel the presence of God. Hands lifted everywhere right now. You know it's you. You know it's you. This ain't about everything. Everybody, this is about you and God. Father, in the name of Jesus, woo, I thank you that right now, this is the launching pad of our faith. And right now, Father God, we're identifying. We know there's something you've called us to that is bigger than us. And we've been sitting in this place. But today, I thank you by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is an igniting that is about to happen on the inside of your people. I speak to fear and I say that just like Joshua and Caleb, this group of people watching all over the world is going to be strong and courageous. I pray for every pastor, every leader, every mother, every son, every brother, every student, that there would be an ignition on the inside of them to step out in faith and to look in the face of giants, to look in the face of adversity, to look in the face of never being done before and say we are well able. If God be on our side, who can be against us? Thank you, Father God for trusting you. I pray that your people like never before, something is gonna change this week. I thank you, it's like a, I see like a, 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 a switch flipping. Like it's gonna be like everything you thought you couldn't do, it's just gonna be like, oh yeah, I got to do that. I got to go out, the, the switch is flipping right now. And I thank you that we would take steps in crazy faith. Have your way in this people. We trust you, we believe you and we thank you. Everybody's standing all over the place. Oh, I feel something. Y'all, I'm telling you, get ready to write down vision. It's not a vision if you won't write it down. It's an idea. <laughs> it's a dream. Write the vision, make it plain. God's about to change some of this. I'm telling y'all, there's something about to happen. Oh, I feel the presence of God. 
We will launch in victory and we're going to live in victory. This is not a slogan. This is, we live up here. <laughs> if you're in this room, and you've been feeling defeated because you don't have a personal relationship with God. Today, I want to offer you the greatest gift that helped me launch into freedom. <laughs> Somebody's like, shoot, you want to launch in victory? I just need to launch into freedom. I'm sick of being bound. I'm sick of these things just weighing on me. Like, this is the victory that is above every victory that you would receive salvation. And God will come into your life in your heart and truly be the Lord of your life. He paid for this thing a long time ago. You just got to, everybody say receive. See, the thing I love about salvation is it's a free gift of God. It's not based on our works. It's not based if you smoked yesterday or you slept with somebody or you lied. It's like, God said, I knew y'all were going to do that. So I sent Jesus. And he is your victory. Like, like victory is a concept, but victory also is a person. And his name is Jesus. And, and, and when he went to the cross, he died as the eternal payment for every one of your sins. He won the victory. He defeated death, hell, and the grave to be able to give you an opportunity to, to live. And today I'm telling you, you don't have to live with the weights that have been keeping you grounded. Today you can see victory by giving God control of your life. If you're in this room or you're watching online or you're seeing this six weeks after broadcast or six years after it, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. It's not promised to us. Don't be like, Lord, let me get a few things cleaned up first. God said, I'll take you just as you are. This church is a hospital for humanity. He doesn't need you to clean up. He wants to help you clean up. If he gets your heart, he'll help you change your habits. Today is the day you say yes. Pastor Mike, why are you so confident? Because I know who I am. I used to be a liar, a manipulator. I was addicted to pornography. I was a cheater. I was somebody who did not have good things in their heart, was looking at ways to manipulate things. And God, if he transformed my life, and I'm up here telling you about him, y'all, there is nothing that our God cannot do. <laughs> so today I want to give you the same opportunity that was given to me to make Jesus Christ your personal, not the crowd's Lord and Savior. Forget them. It's for you, your personal Lord and Savior. And if you're in this room or you're watching online or somebody sent you this message, this is your sign. God, give me a sign. You're with me. Here it is. This big black has on a gradient shirt and braids. Jesus loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. And it doesn't mean everything goes away today, but you'll never walk alone again. And he'll guide you into all truth. If that's you, and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior in this room or online right now, on the count of three, I just want you to lift your hand. There's no lightning that's going to come strike you. There's nobody that's going to rush you like the, they do them parodies on movies. Ain't nobody about to do all of that. God's about to just see your decision. And I just want you to identify. Like if I was saying, hey, if you want $100,000, raise your hand. Wouldn't nobody, be, everybody be like, hey, hey, hey. But when I say, does anybody want to accept Jesus? Like, I don't want everybody to know. The Bible says, if you deny me in front of men, I have to deny you in front of my Father in heaven. I'm just like, Jesus, it's me. <laughs> Let's be identified. One, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Two, your name is going to be written in the Lamb's book of life. Three, if you want to accept Jesus today, would you lift your hands all over the room? I see you, brother. Come on. I see you. Oh, y'all can do better than that. I see you. Come on, there's hands. Oh, no, we're rejoicing with heaven right now. Hey, at Transformation Church, we're a family. So we all pray together for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. Wherever you are all over the world, 
would you just lift your hands and say, God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I repent of my sins and I give you my life. I want to live in victory. So today, change me, renew me, and transform me. I believe you live, you died, and you rose again for my victory. So today, here's my life. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we thank God for every person that just gave that? Oh, y'all can do better than that. Eternities were changed. You're secure in Christ. Hey, listen. If you just made that decision, I want you to text the number on the screen. We're going to send you some information. And everybody, before you start moving, sit down. Chill, chill out. Stop. No, don't sit down. Stand up. Just keep standing up. Just keep standing up. We're going home. I just, I just said something. Just stop. I just want you to know that um, there is, this next seven days is going to be a launching pad. Join us in prayer and fasting. Because God's going to give visions and dreams and rekindle faith and relationships. There, so just make a decision. Tomorrow I'm giving up this, 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 this. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit to this. Next Sunday, this place, you thought it was rowdy today? Just, just get ready for what God is about to do, y'all. What I'm going to ask you to do is this week, I want everybody to personally invite seven people. Ask him to come. Like, ask them to come. I'll come early with you. I'll save a seat for you. Like, I want you to come. We got to get in the habit. If they're in a different state, ask them to watch. Send the links to your family member. This thing is about to spread in a revival way that I, I can't explain, but I need everybody to participate in what's happening. But the biggest testimony is going to be your transformation. Forget telling everybody, just live it. <laughs> I'm so excited for what God's about to do. And next week, we're going to celebrate all that God has done. Father, thank you for who you are and what you've done. And today, we've decided we're going to live in victory. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Y'all go out and live a trans. For life. I love you. Give God one more shout of praise. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. We also want to say thank you to our faithful partners and givers here at Transformation Church. It's because of your generosity that this vision has been made possible. If you'd like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282 or you can visit our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons, as well as our live Sunday experience that begins at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.